And I guess we are live. So welcome to the first uh, Umbraco Tech Partner webinar of two, uh, 2023. Uh, really been looking forward to, uh, to this one. The aim of our Tech Partner webinars is to uh, promote and introduce uh, cool and uh, great uh, tech partners to our ecosystem. And uh, I'm Jonas, I'm the Tech Partner Manager here in Umbraco, and I'll be your host today to together with uh, Olivier from uh, Ally. One of the things that we really embrace here at Umbaco is that to build uh, great uh, solutions for our uh, end customers uh, through, through our agencies, we need great tech partners and Ally is one of them. Uh, Ally is all about tech uh, and, uh, and content recommendations. And I'm sure that Olivier will uh, shed some light on that. Um, content recommendations is a great way to uh, enhance the end user experience. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to hearing from you, Olivier, how uh, you're working with that at uh, Ally. Uh, before I'll hand over the, the word to Olivier, I uh, would like to say that all questions are, are welcome. We'll try to, uh, to, uh, to sum up at the end and then answer all, uh, all questions uh, at the end. And then from there, Olivier, would like to uh, give you the, the scene. Uh, take it away. Thank you, Jonas, and uh, great to be here. I'm Olivier from Ally. And I'll drive you through um, this presentation about content recommendation for your content-rich Umbraco site. I'll have an opportunity to say just two words more about Ally, but I would just like to start with some sort of scoping. This is a great website using Umbraco, and it's from a concert venue, a very nice one, actually in Aarhus, which is the second largest city in Denmark after Copenhagen. And the client is called um, Music House in Aarhus. They have this great new website that they have been, uh, they've been developing it for the past months. And they made it from the start natively um, ready for recommendation. So you have this that is we recommend in the top bar. And that's exactly what is our interest today is to take a website where you have um, rich content. It can be text and pictures and films and all this um, that are describing extremely well the content they have. And the question here is how to make this most relevant and most accurate for any single user so you will get the most out of your website and most of, out of your investment. So about, about the agenda, this about uh, making this website very relevant and very individual. Why is it important? Because we'll see, it's just not only a nice to have, it's not only because it looks good or it's cool, but there are actually some, um, some metrics that we can influence here that make this uh, very, very important. Um, then we will look at some cases and business benefits, illustrating some of uh, the results some of our clients have done. Um, then we will see how it works with Umbraco. Very importantly, also what's in it for an agency uh, to work in that way. And of course, not the least for their clients. And I will, um, I will end the, the, um, the presentation with just a few takeaways as well. So, um, just going back to why is it so important? It's very important. Relevance and individualizations are very important because I think it's fair to know that we live now in the digital attention economy. Uh, I have a couple of, uh, there's plenty of evidence out there, but uh, some of them are very striking. In 2021, it was estimated in the US that an average person would receive between six and 10,000 ads every single day. And a person, in average, an adult, would spend about seven hours a day online. Uh, and that's extremely uh, great figures, of, score, of course, that are uh, very challenging for whoever is trying to exist into this digital economy. So how to exist and who exists actually out there? Well, we all know about Netflix and Spotify. And one thing they are very good at, they're very good at uh, understanding what are uh, the interests of all um, of their users individually. So they use AI powered individualization, so artificial intelligence. They, they use huge machines. They have teams of data scientists and um, these data scientists are also award winning. They are some of the best in the world. And of course they can get to uh, some uh, great personalization. At the same time, what we see out there is for the majority, the current world is a bit different is you work with rule-based uh, 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 communication, such as, well, if the user is more than 30 year old, we'll receive this, or because the, the user has clicked on this, then we will show this. 
So it's not optimal. It's maybe a bit better than one size fits all, but one size fits all, we definitely see that out there. So what if you are not Netflix and Spotify? But this is where we come into the picture because our view has always been to uh, that our clients, they need the same as Spotify and Netflix do, but they need it, need it in a way that is still very high precision in the recommendations, but it needs to be easy to onboard, fully automated. If the alternative is a team of data scientists or five data scientists, then it's not all of our clients that can afford it. It's, um, it will be a way too large project. So um, where we started was actually with a client, um, Danish Radio Concept uh, House as well, just uh, here on the corner in Copenhagen. Extremely beautiful um, concert venue designed by um, French architect uh, Jean Nouvel. And, and the, the issue they had in the start, because we have a background for marketing automation, which is about we gather a lot of data and we send the most relevant communication to every user. The issue they had was, well, we have 400 different concerts in a year. So we have all this great content, but still our size, our, our website is one size fits all. <clears throat> if I'm coming on it, or if Jonas is coming on it, it was basically the same experience. But out of 400 concerts, Jonas may be interested in something totally different than me. So we started experimenting with uh, AI and machine learning and a lot of try and error and started with saying, mm, if you are interested, you, you bought some jazz or you clicked on some jazz, maybe you're interested in jazz again. But that was not enough. So we had to crack that code and we did it by really understanding of the content. And I will uh, go back to it. So this, that was a prototype that time, became a company and the company got some funding and investors and now is on a growth, um, growth journey. So the company is called like the platform, li.io. And now we have clients across uh, venues, of course, but uh, travel business as well and media and films and interest organization, all companies having great content. So to give you um, first an illustration of how Danish Radio Concert Hall has been individualizing sorry, their website. Um, what they start with in the first part, which is a carousel here, then that will be uh, individualized. So the most relevant, and what is the most relevant? I will go back to it, but let's say here, we put up the most relevant events that they have in their portfolio up in the carousel. And then there will be um, six more um, shows that will be uh, displayed here. And out of the six, then three of them will be individualized. So they still want to manage their content and what they show, what they display. So the, um, we should not underestimate the reductional need that our clients have. So we provide some recommendations. The client is able to use these recommendations, but they can also impose if there's a premiere or if there's a show that is not selling very well and all this, they can put it up in a good place. So um, if I go down the website, now there's three boxes and these boxes, they will also be um, individual, individualized, meaning the, um, the order of them, whether we start with this one or that one or that one will also be based on my profile. And I will go back to it. So um, within and within this different uh, three boxes here, also which shows are shown are also individualized. And the last thing they've done is it's difficult to say, but there's a little bit of a of a red of a black button here. If you click on it, it's called recommended for you. Then I will get to a page which is solely individualized for me, and that would be my personal top eight concerts or shows that are shown here. That's, there's different ways from, a, from a, a design perspective to solve this in visualization need, but that's the way they've done it, I think, very elegantly. Uh, not only it's very elegant, but it's also very efficient. After they have uh, started using uh, our platform and, and, uh, and, and, and changed the website accordingly and the experience of the website, then they have experienced that conversion was 15% better and basket size was 20% better. Uh, 
So not only it's beautiful, it's well, well done and, and nice and all this, but it's not nice to have. It's, it's also delivering some very tangible results. Um, what we know uh, traditionally, I would say, is the more the product recommendations. And as you know, there's plenty of tools out there that is doing these product recommendations. What they typically do is they say, now I have an interest in a T-shirt. Those who have most interest uh, in other uh, items than a T-shirt, when you have chosen a T-shirt, is, for example, shorts and, and sneaks and, and so forth. So it's based on some average of what others do in a similar situation. It's not exactly individual. And what we have experienced, what our, our clients have experienced is, is this method is not effective when you work with more deep content. And what is deep content? We found out that it's two types and two types of um, our experience content. And here we can mention a film. This is from a yeah operation fortune. So th this is this is um, this is uh, experience content film. It is also a concert, Savage Rose, for example, description of a concert. It can be also a travel here to the north of of Sweden. Um, then we have information content as well. It's for example an article from a, a digital a newspaper. It can be from an interest organization as well. They have all this great content and many journalists writing a lot of content. And here also about an association to uh, promote the interest of senior people. And that's, they have about uh, a million members here in, uh, in Denmark. So all this uh, client of ours, they have in common that they have this great content and a lot of opportunities to differentiate the website experience based on the content, but doing it in a way where they cannot use what others have done. They cannot use this product recommendation um, um, uh, traditional approach. And what we find out is that we can definitely use this content instead of thinking, whoa, is this article or that article? Well, actually, if you click on an article, if you read an article, a piece of content, or if you purchase one of these products, then it's revealing about your interest. And what we found out was a method or an approach where we can take an article, a piece of content. In this case, it is a picture about a gas station. It is a title, and then there's an article beneath as well. And what we do is we transform, we, we have AI to read and th this article to see that picture and to transform it into some categories. Now, um, what is the difference with tagging? Well, tagging is not systematic. Tagging is something that got forgotten. It's something that is very individual, uh, personally dependent on how the, meso the method about it and, and did I remember to do it? So what we have experienced is tagging of the content is not perfect or actually worse than that, it may create a bias into the recommendations that is counting as a negative factor and how specific and precise you are in your recommendation. Tagging is not good. Using AI have we seen is much better. It's very systematic and uh, AI can uh, handle a lot of content and relate it also to some international databases. So if you see a name, it will pick up what is this name all about? Is it a Finn director? Is it a place in Norway or what is it exactly? So AI is producing uh, categories, but it's producing also semantics. So this article is about something about natural gas and prices and petrol station and war and different topics. What is interesting is if, I'm, if I have read this article, if I have clicked on it, then that, um, that is uh, showing my interest. And if I continue clicking and reading and purchasing and all this, that will reveal more and more of my interest. So what we will do is we will build a cognitive profile about each of the user, meaning everything that I'm doing, all the responses I'm going back with will be accumulated to understand me at a very detailed level. Because if I have read this article, 
I have shown an interest for all this semantics. So then we're in a situation where we can take any new content item and match it with a cognitive profile. It's called, or we call it, the cognitive match. And what, is, what it does is to automatically predict a match between an individual profile, me, and any piece of content. Um, what we find out when we crack the code is that this feature is very significant compared to um, other traditional way of looking at, for example, product recommendation. Here, we found out that this cognitive match accounted for more than 70% of the recommendation precision. So in other words, if you don't have that, then you don't really understand what it's all about, what you need to recommend. So I have a small film that we did because this um, um, case we had with Danish Radio won different prices, including uh, digital uh, awards here in Denmark in two categories. So uh, we produced a small film about it and um, it's about 40 seconds and it's explaining or oh, repeating, uh, explaining, uh, showing what I have just said about this cognitive match. We have developed and implemented a personalization robot based on artificial intelligence and machine learning, which over time creates a cognitive profile for each individual. The starting point is the user's behavior. What they have previously bought, what they click on, from which platform they come from, what they show interest in, and what tonality they respond to and not least, what they do not respond to. Based on semantics, themes, images, and descriptions, we can now create a cognitive match between the individual user and every concert or event the individual has interacted with on any channel. This creates a dynamic and curated 360 degree view of each individual's behavior and preferences. Here we go. So, um, I will now introduce another case, which is very different, but actually not that different because it's using the same properties that I've just explained about the cognitive match. And this is a digital newspaper. Um, they are producing 18,000 new articles per month. And obviously some are more interesting than others. But what they are confronted with is again to exist in the digital economy. Their content need to be relevant. And I need to believe that their content is relevant because that's the reason why I will pay some money in order to subscribe to their digital version of the newspaper. And if I'm interested, not only I will subscribe to it, but I will also keep on doing it. So you have both an element of, of uh, acquisition and element of um, retention into it. The way they've solved it uh, design-wise, because they needed to do that rather quickly with the limitations they had, was to build this uh, carousel here, where you will have uh, different uh, articles that are recommended and that will be um, updated on an ongoing basis. Um, now, it is to say also that these recommendations of articles could as well be shown in an email, for example. So I'm not going to talk so much about it. But this is uh, this is obviously also something that that you can do, and some tools are, are better than others in order to uh, some email tools to uh, to do this. Um, there's a point I would like to uh, to 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 make here about two ways to uh, recommend articles, and both of them are relevant. It depends on how you use them. One of them is the more holistic recommendations. And this is what is fitting your cognitive profile. So if I look at the sum of all my interest, which articles are the most relevant for me? Obviously, because we're looking holistic at me with all the clicks and response and purchase and whatever you have on me, that means it's a quite complex thing. It takes time. So you cannot do that in real time. And in this case, we um, have about four different updates uh, during the day based on the new articles that are coming, how relevant they are for me. So when I'm clicking on an article, it will not give you give me some new recommendations that are just as holistic. So here we have another method that we can use that is um, like more uh, comparison. If, if I have clicked on these articles, what other articles 
are related uh, to this article. Uh, which other articles content is matching the articles that I have just seen? That means if I come keep on clicking into these articles, click, 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 in one session, I will uh, continue having some recommendations in real time that will be based on the content that I have seen. So again, two methods and uh, perfectly um, interesting, both of them, but obviously the one that is the most relevant for my profile is the one on the left, is based on the cognitive profile, we've seen it. Um, in terms of results, again, it's uh, not uh, nice to have, we have some very uh, tangible um, improvements on, on the key metrics for them. The first one is the sign up for paying subscription, meaning acquisition. I mean, you all know what it's like to um, be met with a paywall and the article behind is better be very relevant for me so that I'm going to pay this moment. So what they have seen is if they come with some relevant articles that they can get 19% more signups behind a paywall. Another extremely important dimension for them is the number of impression because it's driving revenues from advertisements. And here what we've seen is about 21% more clicks per visit if the, uh, if the articles are, of the recommendations are individualized and also uh, there would be a faster return um, um, uh, like next visit will be 20% uh, faster. Uh, what we've seen also is in terms of retention, then retention was also 24% higher when the content is personalized. So again, some very uh, um, tangible results and, and uh, great figures. So um, back to, uh, to my first example here. Um, what is what is important to say because now I'm going to talk about how it works um, and, and how it works with, with Umbraco. Uh, what we're using in order to do this recommendation is first party data. So we have uh, fully GDPR um, um, compliant. Uh, the, the end user has also said yes to permission about having some relevant content shown to them or that we can actually use their data in order to come with some content that is uh, that is most uh, relevant, and that's that's a very very important dimension we think because we hear a lot about ethical AI and all this and explainable AI and all this. That's very important. Here we're taking an existing site, we make it even more relevant, even more uh, um, compelling for the for for the individual users. So we are totally within uh, within the uh, the wide area. And, and there's nothing creepy about that. It's just promote the content that is the most interesting for a user. So there's no scandal into this. Um, so the way it works is that um, you already have an Umbraco site. And in this Umbraco site, you already have some great content. And that's one of the two things we need at LI. We need the content because that's what we will analyze using AI, as I showed before. So if I have clicked, on an article, then I need to know what is it I have clicked on to be able to analyze and gather this to find about my interest. So that's one dimension is a great content that is already in Umbraco. The other element that we need is the web tracking and why is because web tracking is telling us how long time is it that I have spent on an article, which article I have clicked on, or if I have purchased something, what is it I have purchased. Um, typically, our clients use Google Analytics, and Google Analytics 4 is uh, great uh, for this because we are typically getting visibility tracking out of it, so meaning that I know um, the time spent on an article, for example. So we have a very good idea whether this article or this piece of content was read or not read. So content, web tracking, and that's enough to make some very precise recommendations that will be delivered back to, uh, to Umbraco. And uh, that will uh, make it possible to run, um, to run um, uh, recommendations on the website. Now I have to add one thing also is how do we identify a user coming on this, on this great website? Well, there's three possibilities. One of them is login. Another one is uh, email. I've been clicking from an email and therefore we know who it is. 
And the third possibility is, well, cookie, because we don't have anything better than that. One is said, uh, if it is my first visit, I'm an unknown cookie. Um, our clients are using typically a default recommendations that would be better than average already or most read or most used or whatever. So from the first visit, you will have something that is default recommendation. Oh, it's a bit better than anything else. And my second visit, okay, then there will be some personalizations. And the more identified I am and the more I come back and the more data our clients have on me, then the better the recommendations will be. And because we use machine learning, recommendation will just get better over time, more and more specific. So now um, we um, have also a plugin on the uh, Umbraco uh, marketplace. So we are we are reference uh, we are referenced uh, there. And um, just a um, couple of words to finish. What's in it for an agency? Um, well, obviously there will be more hours for, for our agency partners because they will have to do some uh, great design and, and development on, on the website or on the app or on the email in order to make um, this uh, communication, I mean, like the channel, very ready for personalization or for individualization. Um, then they will do typically some uh, data, or some, some work about uh, establishing some connections um, uh, to data, and that's either using a Braco plugin or using APIs. There's different ways to, um, to do this. Then there will be also some a bit of work to set up Google Analytics 4 and, and, and mainly visibility tracking. So there are some quite some nice, nice tasks and, and nice hours here for an agency. Obviously, from an end client perspective, that means increasing their revenues. Um, and, and altogether, it's uh, creating some great reference cases. But as I said, some clients of ours have, have won uh, prices and, and, uh, and also it's great references. There's, there's a lot of talk about individualization. We all know that. But very few have actually got there uh, to, be, uh, to, be, um, to be home uh, with it. And um, so now, just to finish a few um, few takeaways. Um, well, first, uh, there's a proven increase in sales and loyalty across industries using individualizations. It's not a nice to have. It's, it's really concrete metrics. Then this now is fully and easily accessible to Umbraco users without it is, number three, a big project, so no need for complexity or, or, or data scientist then data is already there. Uh, it's um, uh, web tracking and it is content. Data is already there. So we already have a, a great foundation for personalization. Then uh, this form of personalization now is made for information and experience content. Um, not only when you have products, also all the information, all the content, all the experience content you have is, um, is now very, very, very uh, great for personalization. And, and finally, there's some mutually beneficial element here for both uh, the client and the agency. So, so there's, there's some, uh, some great uh, ecosystem. So that's the um, end of, uh, of my presentation. So uh, I hope you, Thank uh, you. have something Thank out you, of it. Thank you, Olivier. Really, really great uh, presentations and, and some great takeaways. And uh, before we run out of time, we actually have some some really good questions from uh, from the participants here. Uh, let's start with uh, with with Keith's uh, Keith's questions uh, question. And I think you've answered it a little bit already. But uh, Keith uh, asks: Do website users have to accept cookies for the solution to provide personalized personalized uh, suggestions? Yes, and and the answer is yes. So if you have like mm -hmm. sixty percent of fifty percent saying yes, that would be the one we can experience. We can. Uh, personalized, fully personalized the experience. For the rest, they will get a default recommendation, which is better than standard or than uh, what is done uh, one size fits all today. It's not as good. Okay, okay. That actually answers a little bit Rasmus's question, which is, so if you say no to cookies, you can't show anything or do you uh, then just show the most popular content and newest content, e.g. movies and concerts? But I guess it's uh, you've already answered a little bit earlier. Yeah, but at the same time, if you are um, behind a login or if you come from an email, then we will have the opportunity because you are known then we will, will be able to come with some recommendations that are fully individualized. So this of saying yes to cookie is an issue for a new visitor that is not coming from an email and not behind a login. Um, another question from Keith 
Uh, Keith, um, many of our uh, clients are in the public sector. Do you have any examples of how this could be used in that context? Um, yes, because if there is some uh, knowledge sharing elements into it, then it doesn't mean that you need to have people to read some articles and 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 subscribe again to your subscription. But if you now we work with uh, our public semi public interest organizations, where their role is to diffuse the content they have uh, and make it as relevant as possible, because that's that's their goal. That's what they live. Uh, they, that, that's what they live for. That's their purpose. So so we definitely have experience with this. Again, if, uh, if, if it's uh, knowledge sharing and making sure as many as possible will actually see the relevant content, then it's relevant. Mm. Great. Uh, another question here uh, before we wrap up, Olivier. Uh, default recommendations to say uh, better than normal, but based on what other people's behavior um, or most popular or most average like uh, across all profiles, how, how is it that it's done? Yeah, um, what we do is to uh, look at the recommendations we do for, for the other ones, for the ones that we can identify. And then we will take the most uh, uh, the most highly recommended and show that. And what we have experienced is that they could actually beat some of the most read, for example, articles. So so that's, that's the way we do it. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, Olivier. For everyone participating, this uh, webinar has been recorded and will be shared on uh, on our YouTube um, at, um, at Umbaco HQ. And uh, if any uh, other questions uh, come up, I know that Olivier and the team at Ally are uh, more than happy to answer any questions. And of course, feel free to reach out to them uh, if you want to uh, have a dialogue on how uh, Ally can help you help your customers build better customer experience with better recommendation and, and, and individualized uh, content. Thanks a lot uh, for participating. And thank you, Olivier. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.